Good evening. So tonight I wanted to talk a little bit more about scars. I know a lot of you that um, watch me or pay attention to what I'm talking about also have wounds. So anytime you have a wound or an incision, you have a procedure done, you are going to have an injury to the skin and it is going to scar to some degree. Um, we all hope for a nice flat scar, but some of us just don't heal that way. I'm going to share a screen. So we all hope, let's see, am I sharing? We all hope we get that nice flat scar. If your surgeon is able to um, close your wound and approximate the edges, then hopefully you're going to get a nice smooth scar, just like you're seeing, I hope, here. If that's like a great scar, that'll hopefully fade a little bit and become a less noticeable. If you have some a scar like this that is um, like on your knee or on your shoulder or somewhere where it may get some sun, you wanna always make sure that you are using um, an SPF, SPF of 30 is um, recommended. You want to make sure that it is, that'll prevent it from turning like a weird purple color. So use your SPF if it's somewhere that will be exposed to sun. Um, there are some little spots here where it looks like it may be a little raised. This one probably had some staples in it because you can see um, the other puncture marks, the zipper type look to it. Um, so those will all fade over time. Now, if your wound does not heal well, let's see. Or if you have a very large incision, like a tummy tuck, maybe larger and kind of cover the entire bottom of your abdomen. This almost looks like <clears throat> it pulled a bit, like there was a little bit of tension there from swelling it just has some tension there from swelling. Now, usually it's advised that if you have a large procedure like this, a tummy tuck or something like that, you would want to be getting, um, going to see someone for some post-op care, going to get some manual lymphatic drainage. And I'm not talking about the drainage where they're opening your incision and, and draining you out of a hole. I'm talking about just gentle, um, hands only lymphatic massage that's stimulating the lymphatic system to help manage the edema. That will should help with some of that in the beginning. Um, but it just looks like this is a high tension area and it looks like there was a little bit of pulling in that area. Now, if this is something that you're dealing with, um, there are popular products that are out there, vitamin E and bio oil. Those are there's questionable research on those um, using something like a scar fade cream like Mederma would be advisable. Also, this looks a little bit raised and you would want to use something like a silicone based gel or even the silicone strips. And I'll provide um, some links to all of this stuff and I'm happy to discuss it with anyone if you want to discuss um, the situation that you're in. But if your scar looks like this, I would probably go with more of a skin fade cream, or you can try some of the silicone products that may help to lay your scar down a little bit nicer and flatter and smoother. There is no like puckering, which is good on this one. Sometimes you'll have um, a little tucking in like this one. <clears throat> where this is kind of 
you can see it's got an indent there. Now, sometimes that'll happen just in portions of your scar, not the whole thing. And these might be situations if this is where you're at, where something like myofascial release, um, some cupping therapy, something to help um, break up that adhesion. As soon as your wound is healed, so there's no more drainage, there's no nothing going on, you can start doing some scar massage. And you should be working with um, a therapist, a physical therapist, a massage, somebody that can show you how to do this. Um, usually your physician is just going to tell you about it, but they're not going to show you how to do it. So you may want to ask your physician for a referral if you don't already have one to therapy that can help um, guide you through this process a little bit. If there's anyone that you don't have anyone near you, you can absolutely reach out. Um, I do consultations. We can work this out. I have a self-care program as well. But a lot of these issues, um, especially in the abdomen, you'll have these referred type pains. And I don't know if you listened to our conversation with Dr. Jen, I think two weeks ago, the scar lady. And she just talked about how our brain is how it handles the trauma of the surgery, how you become um, kind of protective of it, how you may limit your mobility, how you may not be touching it. And those are all things that will seem like it's being protective in the beginning of your issues, but down the line will cause some further issues. And it seems like the abdomen for sure, it's almost like there's space where you could maybe not realize that scar adhesions and things were becoming an issue until they're like really an issue. So if your scar looks like this on the outside, just imagine how like tight and pulled in it is on the inside. And that can cause some problems down the line. So it's something to, you know, be proactive about. Now, let's see, a keloid scar or hypertrophic scar um, are going to be our raised scars. They will, um, you will probably know if you're going to be someone that's going to develop a keloid because you probably have the issues in other places from other injuries. Um, dealing with keloids, there you're probably going to want to work with a dermatologist or a um, plastic surgeon's office they can either remove them or treat them with cortisone injections or laser treatments, but they definitely can be debulked and brought down. So it's something that you have to wait until you're healed, but then you can absolutely get a better appearance with something like this, but it is gonna require um, more care. So absolutely, if you're dealing with some keloid issues, make sure you're talking to your surgeon, find a dermatologist, find a plastic surgeon close to you that can work with it. Most plastic surgeons office have like some aesthetic type aspect to their business as well. So definitely look into that. I hope those pictures are helpful. So you're not just uh, trying to get what I'm talking about, but if you're dealing with a scar, there are so many things that you can do at home. If you have a completely mature scar, this is something that um, sometimes they'll do at an um, aesthetics office, but I found it on Amazon. I've actually been doing it on my face and it's pretty good, but the micro needling pen is something that can help with um, the aesthetic look of your scar as well. And it's actually something that you can do at home. Um, let's see, I'll open it up. So it comes with these little needles. Mine came with, I don't know how many, maybe 10 different packages. Why can't I open this? But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Post below whenever you get a chance to watch this because I will see that and respond. So some takeaway messages are to make sure that you 
wait until your wound is completely healed before you really start worrying about um, managing your scar issue. The sooner we can get that wound closed, the, the better your scar is going to look. So if you have a big um, gaping hole and you're having to pack it, and if your surgeon is just telling you to keep using wet to dry and things like that, we can do so much better for you. Please be in touch. Um, we can help um, get your wound closed faster than that. And once your wound is closed, you want to use something like a scar fade cream instead of like a oil to fade that scar. Make sure you're using um, SPF for your scars, especially if they're in sun exposed areas. Silicone, either gels or sheets are going to be more beneficial um, to get your scar to lay nice and flat. And if you have a scar that's like super old and you're just really annoyed with how it looks, something like a micro needling pen. I don't know how. Let's see. So it literally has a bunch of needles that just vibrate in and out. This used to be something that you could only get done at an office. And now you can actually find them to do at home and it can be great to help smooth out your scar. So if you wanna know if that's maybe something that's appropriate for you, you can definitely reach out and ask. I will post links below to everything that I've talked about, but I look forward to doing these weekly. So if you have a question about your wound and your healing, please reach out. Um, it helps guide the conversation a little bit we're heading into October, so my plan is to talk about some breast cancer, um, wound and treatment, and skin issues from the treatments through the course of October. But if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. If you'd like to have a private video consult, let me know, and we can come up with a plan just for you. All right, look forward to talking to you. Hope you are all well and healthy and staying safe. If you have any questions, no. Bye.